The third speaker, uh, Tomislav Saboda, active transport advocate. Uh, Tomislav is a physician, epidemiologist, public health specialist, and associate professor at the University of Toronto. He's well, well known for his carbon past and carbon strike in the past 12 years. The refusal, the refusal to participate in major greenhouse producing activities such as not riding a car or a plane during his action. As a physician, he does mental health addictions, harm reduction work, and those who are chronically homeless. His environmental focus is transportation, home economics, and veganism. He is an avid cyclist and co-founder of the, and resident of the Barney Jarro International Community in the Annex. He's talking about transport. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I'm going to stand behind the podium here. And uh, I'm also going to have a little stopwatch here because I can also go on and on. Um, I like the uh, the uh, dimension about, uh, about love and that uh, being something that uh, drives one. Um, I like to think that I'm also driven by love, but I'm also driven by numbers. You can see a lot of numbers, so um, I hope uh, I hope you'll uh, find them useful. Um, so just from the get go, uh, just a quick review: uh, we're trying to keep our our temperature down to less than 1.5. Um, the difference between 1.5 and 2 degrees is fairly large. Uh, two to three times uh, you know, the impact on uh, our ecosystems. Um, in fact, at, at 2 degrees, you might expect 99% of our coral reefs to disappear uh, compared to maybe 70 to 90% at 1.5 degrees. Um, and so it's really important that we try to keep it down below 1.5. The, the whole drawdown is in this graph here, and this is a uh, Greta, um, I think, being happy at uh, that drawdown. Um, you know, we need to. We, this is this is a dramatic graph because it shows what we need to do. We've been rising in the amount of CO two um, for decades, and now suddenly, in three decades, we need to go down to zero. So this is a big this is a big uh, thing to consider, and it's an important number to consider. Um, when you look at what we're doing in Canada, the governor, um, the auditor general, uh, in last year, two years ago, looked at what we were doing, and it looked. You know, even though we were committed to reducing things by um, CO2 by 30% um, by 2030 from 2005, we're actually going to increase um, from, from 2010. And so we're actually going in the wrong direction. So it's really important that we do this. The exciting thing about drawdown is that it's peer reviewed science showing that we can actually do this. Um, but we need, to, we need to actually make some efforts. And hopefully, in this presentation, I'll. I'll uh, describe some of the actions that we can get engaged in. This is uh, another kind of reality check on what we're able to achieve. This is what the entire country, the community, the world was able to achieve in 50 years, which is a 70% reduction in tobacco smoking um, from you know, the, the 60s to you know, 2017. Um, so, and it was hard. You know, it took, it took um, taxes of 20% on, on a pack of cigarettes to reduce it this much. And right now, our carbon tax is on the order of three percent. So we need to really move the, move things. So um, I'd like to say that drawdown gives us the technology and the science, but we have to fuel this. So we here have to have to fuel this. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So transportation in context: um, how much how much does transportation contribute? Um, the average Canadian puts out 19 tons of CO2 every year. About 38% of that is, uh, is transport. Half of that is by us as individuals. Um, half of that is the community at large. So I, I thought that was an important uh, thing to, uh, to understand. That there is both personal actions that we need to engage in and we need to engage um, as a community. So another, another important slide in, in terms of data is that uh, you know, the Earth can only absorb about 1.8 tons per person. So we're emitting 19 tons, and the Earth can absorb about 10% of that. And that's why there's this huge buildup. So uh, other things, uh, to put things in perspective, uh, one trip to Cuba and back is 1.8 tons. One trip to Europe and back is, is twice that. So we're like way, way off the mark here. So it's important to, I think, look at the numbers to understand how far off the mark we are and how far we need to go. So these are, these are some important numbers. Similarly, uh, you know, the most efficient um, internal combi combustion engine produces about 3.2 um, tons per year, or twice what the Earth can absorb. So we're, we have a lot of work to do 
in the next in the next thirty years. This is this is what's possible. So this is the technology that Drawdown is uh, drawing on. So if you look at uh, you know personal type uh, transportation in the left graph, you can see that rail travel um, is far better than than aviation. It's ninety percent better. So by going by train, um, let's say if you go to uh, Vancouver by train, you're going to use one tenth of what you might use um, if you're going by by plane. So these are these are these are big efficiencies, and that's of course using the best technology, which we don't have right now in Canada. But if you look at the kind of technology that's being used in Europe, it's uh, it's actually quite possible. Okay, so in terms of drawdown, uh, that little blue uh, slice, that little blue slice of pie, is um, what uh, transportation uh, represents in the in the drawdown kind of scenario, um, or how much. Um, um, greenhouse gases we can reduce using uh, the drawdown um, suggestions. Now, if you, uh, if you break that transportation down, you'll see that a lot of it is actually electric vehicles. Um, in fact, personal transport um, is about 40% of, um, of, the, of the drawdown, and a lot of that is electric vehicles, hybrid cars, electric bikes, etc. Then we have transit is about 14%, bike infrastructure is 10%, and uh, telepresence is nine uh, percent. So those are the ones that I'm going to focus on in this, uh, in this talk. So the thing to the thing, the thing take from this slide is that uh, for drawdown by 2050, 70 percent of cars need to be electric, 30 percent need to be hybrid. Right now, it's um, you know it's it's on the order of like a percent or so um, in the world. So we need to do a lot. So this is uh, this is the point uh, that we're going to make here. For drawdown, 30% needs to be hybrid, let's mention that. And this is what we're doing in Toronto. So in Toronto, we actually have a very exciting um, plan. Um, Transform TO is right kind of on target, and it's doing a lot of really, really good things. So that's what I wanted to highlight here. Um, by 2050, 30% of the solution is going to be uh, electric vehicles, and I'm going to look at that in the next slide here. So the the, energy, uh, the electric vehicle um, strategy um, in Transform Toronto is actually quite ambitious. The the goal by 2050 is that all cars will be electric vehicles. By 2030, and I'm not actually quite sure how we're going to do this, but the city of Toronto wants all new vehicle purchases to be electric. So in the next 10 years, that means if any of us buy a vehicle in the next 10 years or 10 years from now, it's going to be an electric vehicle. That's much different than than what's happening right now. Uh, by 2040, uh, the city is actually going to lead, and it's going to say that uh, um, uh, half of the half of the fleet in Toronto is going to be electric. Um, by 2040, all new purchases by the city are going to be electric. So every new purchase of a, of a bus, um, or of an electric vehicle, uh, sorry, of a, um, a city vehicle, is going to be electric. So these are really big, really big commitments by the uh, by the city of Toronto. This is. Um, this is the growth of electric vehicles in Canada. Um, so we're looking at 2.5% right now. Um, in China, it's actually much higher. Electric vehicle sales in China are about 20%. And it's forecasted that the, uh, by 2025, 50% of new, new purchases in China will be the uh, electric vehicles. So it is possible. It is possible for a community, for a country to do this. However, the reality check again. Uh, this is what the, what the bankers, what the investment bankers, Think is going to happen by 2030. So, whereas um, Transform TO is suggesting that 100% purchases are going to be electric vehicles, um, the bankers like uh, JP Morgan are suggesting that only going to be 20%. Um, 40% are going to continue to be the regular vehicles. So, this is a problem. This is, you know, if I were to, if I were to think about this, you know, the bankers, you know, they have kind of some sense of reality of what they think is going to happen. This is this is a dangerous signal test. This is something that we need to we need to address. So, call to action: get get an EV. If you're going to get a car, think about getting an EV or a hybrid. Get others to do it. If you're not getting a car, get your best friend to buy an electric car rather than a um, than, than an internal combustion engine. Um, the Electric Vehicle Society is a thousand members. If you've got an EV or you're thinking of getting an EV, consider joining them. David Suzuki Foundation, Greenpeace. Um, are all engaged in um, getting motivating people to use uh, electric vehicles. I put Transform TO and ClimateFast, who've been heavily involved with uh, the um, the transition in the city of Toronto. 
Um, Greenpeace here, the picture there is showing uh, 25,000 activists last week in Germany showing up at the uh, motor, uh, motor conference and uh, basically standing on vehicles and saying, look, these are fine controllers. Mass transit, 14%. So Drawdown is saying that we should have um, 14%, uh, 36% or 45% of people should be taking transit as their main mode of uh, transportation. Right now it's 22% in Toronto. Um, the Transform TO um, plan isn't that, that great, I think, in this, in this perspective. They're only looking at 20, 23% mode share uh, by 2050, and I think we could be doing better than that. So that's somewhere where we can start being a little more, um, kind of pushing our government a little more. Um, if you look at some other cities, uh, many cities are already, have already achieved drawdown kind of level of um, tra um, transit use. If you look at uh, Bogota, uh, Budapest, Vienna, New York City, London, all of those are in the 30 to 40 percent of mode share. That means 30 to 40 or even 60 percent of people use mass transit to get to work every day. Um, now, the city of Toronto um, transit system has a lot of problems. It's uh, it's really poor in terms of its organization, uh, the network. Um, it's the least subsidized um, system in North America. Um, it doesn't have a dedicated tax uh, to pay for it, so it's basically drawn from the global budget and it's not dedicated. So these are all things that have been identified by some of the transit activists that I'll encourage you to uh, participate in. You can see here that it's only about 90 cents of, um, of, uh, of a ride is, uh, is going towards uh, um, each, each of our rides compared to other cities where it might be you know, as much as two, three, or four dollars. Um, the, the operating budget is also the least per ride. It's about two bucks um, per ride in Toronto compared to uh, you know five, six, and eleven bucks per ride in other jurisdictions. So there's a lot of lot of room for action. So we need to act. Um, PPC Riders is uh, probably one of the top um, transit act activists uh, in the uh, in the city. How many people here take uh, transit um, several times a week? How many people are, are members of uh, of TPC riders. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of people who can join TPC riders. I highly encourage it. Also, uh, David Suzuki Foundation, Greenpeace, Toronto Environmental Alliance, again, Climate Fast, all engaged in the transfer uh, geo stuff. Now, ride sharing drawdown suggests that 20 percent of uh, of car commutes should be shared, um, 20 to 30 percent. Right now, in Toronto, it's about 11 percent. The average in Canada is about 16% or 12%, 16% in the cities. Ottawa has 20%. 20% of, of rides in Ottawa are actually shared, which is interesting. This slide is interesting because um, different from drawdown, it actually suggests that uh, the sharing could actually further reduce the, the amount of um, uh, greenhouse gases that are produced by uh, transportation. Um, in fact, another 60% reduction. And these are, these are people that have done this research in the uh, University of California, Davis, again, this is peer reviewed research, suggests that sharing could actually increase things by a lot more. So what can we do? There's a lot of, there's a lot of apps now that we can get. I'm not familiar with these apps. Uh, you know, kids are actually using these apps. There's, uh, there's carpooling options in Uber and Lyft. Um, the problem with, with some of these is that it may draw people away from transit and into cars. Yeah onto the road, an increased congestion. So we need to think of, um, and what the researchers are saying is that the, the car pool needs to draw people out of their cars and sharing cars, but not out of transit. And that's, that's a big danger of the technology. And this, uh, this is the iconic uh, image that a lot of people are probably familiar with, showing what happens when you have 200 people in cars compared to 200 people in buses and three buses. So 200 people takes 177 cars, or three buses um, and on bikes. So you can see that bike, um, bikes are, are, are buses. It's like one fifth in terms of the size of uh, the number of lanes that you need. So that, that's what can happen if you have people car sharing and going into, into cars rather than into transit or uh, a bike. Telepresence, um, also rapidly growing. Um, I just uh, met one of uh, a friend of mine I hadn't seen in a while who uh, is an environmental kind of scholar who went to uh, New Zealand for a conference, but he did it by the internet. And so he actually gave a, a talk there, a presentation, a whole bunch of people were there 
in New Zealand, but they're actually at home. They're in Toronto. And so, so this is rapidly growing. So if you're, if you're in any position to be engaged in a conference, rather than going to Vancouver or going to Halifax or going down to Phoenix, Arizona, think about doing it through, uh, through telepresence. Uh, the, the slide on the, on the, uh, or the, the picture on the, on the left, is to remind me that in, in my field of medicine, it's actually a very growing kind of uh, opportunity for us. There's, uh, there's ways of going up north um, through video conferencing and actually seeing um, patients. So it actually, the OMA kind of keeps track of these things. The Interim Medical Association showed that 270 million uh, kilometers of patient transportation was reduced um, in one year through, uh, through telemedicine. So there's a lot of teleconferencing apps now that are software that can be um, gotten, gotten life-size, Skype, Zoom. There's a lot of open source ones. People are interested in open source. Uh, Zion, um, consider um, taking open source software. Now bike infrastructure, 10% of reductions. Drawdown suggests that 10% of trips across the world should be um, through, through bicycles. Um, right now, globally, or about five years ago, it was about 5.5%. Um, if you look at this uh, graph here, you can see that a number of countries like Denmark, uh, Netherlands, uh, Japan, already up in the uh, 20 to 25% of mode share. So in other words, a quarter of people in Holland get on their bike to get to work every day, which is uh, quite astounding. Compared to Canada, which is about 2.6%. So these are just some nice slides to look at, just to inspire us. Um, again, reminder of the space usage. So, potential for bike infrastructure. Our mode share right now is 1.7% in Toronto. So it's really, really low. Um, we want to get up to, uh, you know, uh, transport transform to your goal. It's actually really exciting. It's 28%, which is huge. Um, so we need to, we need to engage um, to, get a, to get ourselves to that, uh, to that point. Some things to motivate us, if you look at numbers, Montreal, New York, Vancouver all have four to six times more bike lanes uh, per capita or per area than uh, we do in Toronto. Um, also, in terms of opportunity, if you look at 56, um, sorry, trips that are six kilometers or less in Toronto, 56 percent of those are um, sorry, 56 percent of all trips in Toronto are less than six kilometers. Of those trips, only two and a half percent are by bike. So there's a lot of potential there, um, but it needs it needs some action. The blue here is um, is planned trips. The red is what we have. So there's a lot of really good um, plans happening. Um, electric bikes are something to consider. Okay, I need to wrap up. Um, oh, I'm way over time. Okay, <laughs> got to keep track of the numerical uh, time here. Um, anyway, e-bikes are a very good option. Um, Ten kilometers of um, of an e-bike uh, on an e-bike might take uh, 18 minutes compared to a car. It might take 14 minutes. So it's a really good viable option, it's really taking off in, uh, in China and in Asia, it's a lot cheaper. And uh, finally, how many people here are members of uh, uh, Cycle Toronto? Couple. How many people uh, cycle to work? Um, okay. So think about joining Cycle Toronto, it's one of the, one of the top um, advocacy groups for, uh, for uh, cycling. If you look at, uh, there's about 32,000 people in Toronto that are that are uh, cycling to work every day. Only 3,000 members in Cycle Toronto, so another important uh, group to join. Thanks. So, uh, it's clear Toronto needs to work on its transit, as we all know.